The Maple Leaf Rag. It sold over 100,000 copies of sheet music in its first year. I'm sitting here in Sedalia, Missouri, where Scott Joplin spent so much of his early life before a wonderful old player piano in the home, the Robinson home, built here in 1880. In fact, we have on the player piano a roll of Scott Joplin himself playing the Maple Leaf Rag, and we'd like to share a little of that with you. Crank her up now. There's some words here. Up away, up away. The maple leaf rag. Yes, indeed, I mean that popular favorite, syncopated classic, the maple leaf rag. Here comes Scott. He always said, play my rag slowly. Thank you, Scott. Thanks to the recent ragtime revival, people here in Sedalia are very aware of their ragtime heritage. In fact, we visited a museum dedicated to ragtime memorabilia. It has the bar from the original Maple Leaf Club, which of course is the club where Scott Joplin worked and for which he named his famous rag. It has the cornerstone of the George R. Smith Negro College, which was built here after the Civil War and which attracted Scott Joplin to Sedalia. He formed here a brass band, and most important, he met here John Stark. John Stark was a music publisher who recognized the genius of Scott Joplin and began publishing his music. The operation became so busy they had to move it to St. Louis. From St. Louis, Scott Joplin went to New York City where he wrote his most important work, Tremonitia, which was a ragtime opera. Some say that Scott Joplin died frustrated and disillusioned. However, I believe if he were alive today, he would see that his dream to create a classic form from ragtime has been realized. Joplin was, is the king of ragtime. But here in Missouri, we